People like games. Are we recording? We're recording. We're live. It's three years in the making. We're doing it. We're doing We're it. We're doing this. Some time. We both brushed up on our professional skills. We are ready to go, clearly. Uh, I'm actually still trying to think about what the fuck I'm going to say, but We're going to figure it out right there. What's up, people? What's it's up? Solo. <laughs> I'm Lulu. Oh, man. What a comeback. I know. It's been what a minute. What a comeback. It's been uh, a minute. We did. Shout out to the OG fans. Pew, pew, pew. I don't remember when we did it, that. Because we did the back and forth, and then it was the episode numbers. We mm-hmm. never, we had never named the show. So welcome back to another episode of People I Games. Um, Let's go. PLG. Subscribe, like, etc. Welcome. It's a year cap. We are going to talk about the top gaming stories of the year. It's going to be simple. We're just going to go back and forth on some of the top stories. Starting with the fact that the Call of Duty League ended up having no actual acquisition of its media rights, meaning that once their deal with Twitch ended, no one was signing them. So there was nowhere for the league actually to stream to be able to monetize. They ended up cutting a deal with YouTube, but yep. Uh, yep. I know the new Warzone came out and all these other Call of Duty games, but the health of esports is a little bit in question in 2022. And that's sort of one of the first topics that comes to mind for I guess we're going to expand more than stories into themes of the year. So esports is in trouble. And, you know, this is sort of a reflection. When we started a couple of years back, all of this was riding a complete high. Yeah. yeah. 2019, that was pre-COVID, baby. I mean, think about it. Everyone disappears in the ether. People start actually enjoying being at home, having cloud services come around, watching all these different shows and getting into media in general. Gaming was on the rise. Twitch streaming obviously took off, but then what but happened? How does the, yeah. that, that, there's an inverse right there, which is like, as gaming became more popular because of the pandemic, I would have assumed that esports would have taken this sort of cultural place of something. It would have had more of a driven viewership. So there's is a curiosity to me, which is where it's like, why, why is it not sticking here? I get Maybe it. Because yeah. it's a little bit artificially inflated, but... The pandemic just sort of showed up. I'm like, you guys can't even get viewership when no one has anything else to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely agree. I think there's definitely a multitude of nuanced issues there. And I, I just want to say, I mean, this is supposed to be quick to go, but real quick, it'd be like, there's so many games in the market and so many games have an audience, right? So depending on the day, you can flip on like a channel, like on TV and go on Twitch to whatever the fuck you want to watch. Any video game across the board, so many different genres. It's not like basketball is basketball, football is football, soccer or football, whatever the fuck we want to call it. Is, is that sport. There is a worldwide skills for those typical sports. And you understand intrinsically those skills because we all, as human beings, move around. When you're watching Overwatch and you're watching a character, think about like a parent with some kids. Like the kid will know what's going on because they play the game. They know the characters. But when you have like 35 different people with different abilities across the board. And then you're trying to figure out who's actually a tank, who's doing this, who's doing that. And you have an announcer in the background, just yelling, Oh my God, this person's hitting that shot. Oh my God, he uses all the, like, it's hard to follow. It's hard to pick up. It's not an easy thing to dive into the people who like it really like it. And therefore yeah. they're invested. They watch it. You and I would fall into that category because obviously we do this with all games. Yeah. Those other people just, it's so hard to dive into unless you're watching a game, AKA like FIFA, if you're watching yeah, a FIFA the, tournament that's based I, on. Real I life. never understood that no? concept either, which is like, if there's real football around, why are you going to pick up a FIFA like exactly. and watch FIFA yeah. rather? So there, there was a, there was a course correction that was needed almost in the same way that tech happened where like the, the valuations of everything ran away so much from what was actually being provided. And the numbers people. look good. Man. They did look good. We we covered the numbers. We covered the value of the money. But like, think about the economic downturn that we're currently experiencing or going to experience in the future. Crypto crash. A lot of things tied in the digital realm were married up with crypto. The scene of crypto fucking boomed. If you were there, if you joined the GME train, aka that was obviously not crypto, but that stocks and going up. You joined the Bitcoin. Craze yeah, but like. Highs. I don't know. Like the numbers were good, but it was always like the same thing with tech, which was there was a lot of eyeballs, but there was no monetization schemes. 
And the same thing you used to complain about with esports teams to be like, where's your additional revenue model going to come from? You have a ceiling. Right. They hit the ceiling. Investors want their money. But what else we got? A lot of different news. Um, I would say, so <laughs> in this case, there is the Bayonetta scandal that went on. I think it was just pretty funny. Not, when I say funny, unfortunate for this woman, Helena Taylor. She was boycotting Bay, Bayonetta 3. She was the voice actress for Bayonetta 3 for uh, the main character there. But point being, there is this controversy going around. How much should a voice actor be paid? How much should they not be paid? This I guess one on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when this this thing got blown out. She was telling everyone to boycott and donate the money to charity that they would have spent the game. And it's just interesting all around because I'd never actually thought about it. All this, like the reason why this is interesting to me is just because when I heard the story, I was like, huh, oh shit. How how much do those people in all these games, like how much does fucking Mario get paid in Mario Odyssey? Yeah. Like how much does yeah. that guy get paid? Or yeah, just, just, I do wonder how much of that is this. They record it once and they just recut, the, use the same audio. Like no, you don't have that, to change it. There's two games before Bayonetta three. You'd think, right? And she had voiced, act, you know, supported the other two. I wonder in the contract, it's like we own the rights to these voice lines. Why can't we just reuse them? And you're, I agree. Yeah. With you. So it's like four thousand dollars. She claims that she was offered four thousand dollars for the whole game. Then it was back and forth. Some new numbers came out saying that she was offered $4,000 per session and up to five sessions total, meaning a total of 20K. And then she's like, no, I wasn't ever offered 20K. The initial offer was 10K, but it was really, four. I was like really confusing, hard to follow. Yeah, like I, I, I feel for her because I understood where the merits of the argument was, but it Amy. was a oh, little bit, me. yeah, a pay artist, right? But yeah. it was a little bit deceptive in its execution. For sure, which is what everybody is. The general lesson there is you never want to be the fucking main villain or star of the Internet ever for a day. OK, OK, yeah, for right. a day, for okay. a day. Like she was she was in the story for a day or two and that's it. Right. And I was gone. It got settled. It means the fame. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's like. But that's that's a rough 15 minutes to get. It's like <laughs> everyone's like, yo, boycott Bayonetta. Then everyone's like, oh, wait, never mind. Fuck that. Yeah. But I, I, I never even honestly have played them. So it's just, it, was, really. it just, you know, prime some thoughts. I'm curious about that. I know Not she's in you. Smash Bros. So that's Ooh. something. But all right. See so what else we got here? Um, I have a big one, but I'm going to save that for like my biggest story, which everyone obviously knows. That's that's going to be FTC and Microsoft, but we're going to get into that because that's layered. Sure. Uh, I will say Netflix is trying to get into gaming. Mm. Uh, why? That just feels like one of the dumber stories in 2022 in a year where Netflix's stock tanked because of the amount of subscribers it was losing. And then on the heels of 2023, when it's going to stop password sharing in the mm. U.S., which they, mm. I guess, statistically you haven't seen is that it might affect 100 million users which is i'm sure every single fucking user on the internet who has netflix has someone additionally on their yeah, account that's I mean, using it yeah you want to split that cost yeah. baby. the family counts across the, the family board. counts a board but now this is a version of even psychology of business for everyone you can't offer something and then take it away you would just have to never offer it in the first place. So now they had the amenity of, yo, you can password share. When they suddenly say, yo, you can't password share anymore. And by the way, we're going to raise the price on you again next year because it's going to creep up every year. That's right. the only way for them to exist. Then what are they going to do? They're going to lose more people and then the stock's going to tank. I'm like, I'm going to go on record. Like, Netflix is going to be like the blockbuster of <laughs> of, the, of the streaming Interesting. Era. So you're taking yeah. the blockbuster narrative that... You know, Blockbuster did not take the opportunity to buy Netflix. Then Netflix yeah. said, guess what, motherfucker? Ten years later, we are the biggest entertainment in the industry. Okay. But yeah, you uh, die a hero or you live. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you just ooh, full circle. We're going full, full circle. <laughs> I, I think realistically, um, Microsoft or, or Sony is going to buy them. Okay. Uh, I hope not. And yeah. I mean, this links into another discussion you want to have in a little bit, so we don't necessarily yeah. need to go into why, but yeah. um, I do hope not. I will say I am on the opposite side of this because I do think that when big companies try to do something crazy, 
sometimes you get something fantastic out of it. Other times, obviously it flops. It, it doesn't really matter, but they have the money to afford being creative and, and changing things they're up. They're not trying to be creative, bro. They're trying to make Candy Crush. They're trying to make Candy Crush. And <laughs> That's you know, it. That's the whole purpose of this it. shit. You're going to say it. That's the whole it. purpose of this like operation. Re- Re- like I, A different Candy Crush, but it'll be like Stranger Things upside down world or some shit like that. I'd fucking play that all day. There's no nobility in Netflix's fucking gaming scheme. <laughs> they're trying to create games. I think interactive media is something that I'm personally interested in, something that I definitely want to follow up on but they've already had touches in the gaming realm right before they announced that they were going to go into gaming they had the interactive media so interactive movies you could choose the choices and watch different scenes play out they had the different interactive specials i like that idea i actually think it's a very unique medium some way to get the family involved like those goosebump books in Washington. i mean exactly turn the page whatever but this is on the screen and having a big company invest money to try to make that experience more polished is great you know, I, I don't mind it. I'm actually curious where it goes. And, you know, what's the worst that can happen? For the bang for your buck, because you're not getting rid of Netflix. I'm not getting rid of Netflix. I'm going to get rid of Netflix. Like, they're, they're, okay. I very rarely end up watching Netflix. I think Hulu I is very underrated for, for great content. You got some ads. I don't like it, but, I mean, I understand why you have I'm it. I'm going back to pirating. <laughs> Fuck it. We go full circle and this Jolly Rogers, so I'm full circle. I'm back anyway, on Pirate Bay. Point being, you get more bang for your buck as a user if you enjoy it, if you use it, if you have your kids instead of getting them a fucking PlayStation, you're like, hey, go on the TV, play Netflix. It's cool. There's also a, a yes, different- but they can't. Oh, go the quality of games thing, which is like you're basically betting. So because, like, basically the same issue that esports are having, which is they're learning you can't be profitable if someone else owns the IP in the way that gaming companies do. So they can only make so much money based off all of the available real estate next to it, like adjacent, but they can't touch the actual money coming from the game. But they bought they the should have a profit share with these companies because they're in the essence of marketing their game. And so the sales are being driven by these teams. So if you are an esports team, how do you quantify that? That's a different story, but the partner, but that's based on the grace of it. And as you see, like, Nintendo is one company which we love absolutely. Nintendo, if you're listening, we're gonna say nothing but nice things about you. <laughs> Sometimes they respectfully choose to not work with people. Fair, um, fair. But like the Smash scene, right? Like Nintendo just doesn't want to do it. They're not interested in it. And no matter what company or scheme you set up, as good or great as it might be, it's just not gonna work. You're not gonna profit because Nintendo could shut it down at any time. Same with all this stuff. Let's so. bridge this back to the Netflix thing, though. Just yes. to bridge back, Netflix does own the IP. They do have their own internal original series that they are trying to base games off of. And they have bought studios already. That's the whole point. They've been yes, doubling but up. They would be better guys off games. licensing it off to actual de- like You know what I mean? They're just basically in-housing a mobile development process and calling it uh, something bigger than it is. Well, I mean, hey, something bigger than it is. We'll see what comes out of it, really. I'm excited Listen. because that is probably something we're going to see in the future. Well, this actually ties into another one, Google Stadia. Yeah, Shut that's down. exactly where I was going to put yeah. it as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Google Stadia going down, whoo, sign of the times, maybe not sign of the times. We, but if they can't, how will Netflix, right? Even Amazon is struggling and they have both those companies have, in essence, unlimited money. Right. Versus like even Netflix, it doesn't have unlimited money they're in a press right and so they're in a press to be profitable versus like amazon just throwing crucible fail throw like three billion dollar done <laughs> rings of power give me a piece of shit doesn't matter done like yeah. what bottom line is that hitting they generate that in a day it's just like facebook with well rather okay meta with the fucking metaverse and doing things with oculus i get it big companies uh, hey i'm thinking why it's why did stadia not why did stadia fail though yeah i was gonna bring it back there where stadia failed just because people didn't utilize let's say chrome is not the only option out there as a browser and the performance just wasn't that great right i think when you have something cutting edge and revolutionary and i'm actually going to relate to something timely right now you have a new technology utilized in movies that makes an experience so much more uh fantastic aka the way of water avatar the way they shot it, all the underground things, the special effects I hear are fantastic. I'm going tomorrow. Very excited. Plug, plug, plug. But point being, 
nothing in Stadia really broke ground in the sense that I can buy a console and play at home and have a wonderful frame rate, no gaps, no lag, nothing like that. Great. Use Stadia. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes it didn't. Sometimes the service was down. Sometimes I only got fucking 15 frames per second. I remember playing on my computer right here, sitting in front of the console being like, this is the fucking worst. Is that a good experience? Is that going to bring you back? No. And is that something that really the uh, creator can control? No, they can't because they can't control your ISP, aka the internet provider. They don't know the service you have in your area. They're just relying on what you have as an individual versus a console that is local to you and all you require is the direct connection to your screen, right? Yeah. Because there's no performance incentive, like really just nothing revolutionary. It just, it never hit home for me. And I think that's probably what a lot of people felt as well. The convenience just, it didn't live up to the idea of it, if that makes sense. Is it an indictment of cloud gaming's potential? Because if you remember taking it back to like 2016, I'd been gaming on a MacBook and I was using NVIDIA GeForce now, and right. that service worked seamlessly. Right. It was when they actually tried to go out of beta and add a business model that they got into trouble because then all the companies are like, actually, no, you got to pay up. So was this, a, is this a cloud gaming issue or was this like you said, like, why are you making a sort of n unnecessary additional console? Because like Xbox cloud gaming arguably does what Stadia does, mm -hmm. but right. no, I mean, it, it does, but it also has a local host, meaning you buy an Xbox One S, right? And you have hardware there available for you to process that information. When you're running these services off your fucking TV, right? And yeah. you're running these services off of just your screen or just your laptop, whatever the case is, you yeah. don't have the same processing power you do as a local powered unit. But, but when you use like, a, have you used uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming on like a computer or your phone? No, I mean, my computer can, can handle the processing, right? I know it's yeah. supposed to be done in the background and you're streaming it back and forth. Point is, I have a good enough setup and good enough, let's say, bandwidth that I'm paying for. That's great versus... Say I'm a user and I'm paying the 25 up, 25 down rate, like the cheapest internet rate you can get right now, right? Mm -hmm. 25 megabits per second. It's just not going to be good because when they advertise 25 up, 25 down, your ISP is actually only going to give you like 15, right? It's going to be throttled at certain points in the day because other people around you are using more of the internet. You have three people watching Netflix while you're trying to game. Guess what, motherfucker? It ain't going to happen. You're going to have a bad experience. So just it's... It's just the infrastructure is not there personally for me to have cloud gaming really seamlessly take off. And I would argue that like an Xbox One S is not really cloud gaming either or an, uh, a PlayStation without the CD reader. Would well, no, the cloud gaming aspect is a service. So it, it, it is sort of like you could pull up Xbox cloud gaming on your phone and sure, you could okay. play connect with a controller. So it's like it is like it, if you try to play online, it's not great, but. I thought Stadia could break in. I know Amazon tried the same with Luna, but then I think they folded that one up too. Yep. They folded Luna, they folded Stadia. There are other people trying to do the same things. I mean, uh, different services are coming out with their own. <laughs> Samsung has its own gaming service hub right now. Um, what else? There's like yeah, Logitech yeah. or something like that, a couple other things. It's Everyone's trying to do the gaming thing. And so... So much money I've, there. You, I mean, but there it's see that's where it is right everyone assumes there's so much money in gaming but it's so centralized and concentrated in like literally a handful of companies which brings us now to a really big story because we keep circling around i'm gonna pause one more time before we get to the big one because that's my biggest story of the year but g4 shut down mm -hmm. they rebooted Gaming media this year had a rough year as well on top of esports. And there's an again an inverse relationship between like Fanbyte shut down everything and there's a couple of other places. There's a hugely inverse relationship between games and their popularity and the media ecosystem around it or the me uh, yeah, the media ecosystem around it because they're not profiting. Because the idea that gaming is as popular as it's ever been, if not more, and all these places are like, yeah, we can't turn a goddamn penny out of any of this. I'm like, yeah. what is going on here? What is that the problem? But no, they're the big one. I mean, FTC. All right, go. No, no, no. I, we're pivoting. I get it. FTC, I think Activision Blizzard. Suing. 
being uh so basically the premise that the government has stepped in to stop this merger is that they will uh basically stop what was the word uh that they use it would Monopoly? stop innovation mm. in emerging gaming markets. innovation and growth yes yeah. and so that idea i do want to agree with because as pro just do what you want as i am there is a monopolization occurring in in gaming that's yep. a little rough and it's not it didn't even start in gaming like to be frankly honest I, like they should have stepped in when when disney was buying 20th century fox because when they bought 20th century fox i was like yo at what point does some place become a monopoly of ip like if you own every piece of cultural media and I was talking to my brother about it. like Warner Brothers has it with like in Space Jam. You saw how much of culture they own. Right. That's what it is to a degree. So gaming is the same thing. So like if you own and this comes to exclusive. So now you say, OK, they bought Activision Blizzard. What's the big deal? I'm like, look at what they did with Beth Bethesda. Bethesda? Bethesda. <laughs> Bethesda, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> the point being. All right. Okay. Okay. We, you. This is a running trope that you have. You can't fucking pronounce it. It's just so fucking funny. It's, it's, I don't understand why you can't pronounce Bethesda. There's a couple of names like this that that, that come up for me. He, Ubisoft. Ubisoft. You be soft. Ubisoft. Ubisoft. It sounds like Ubisoft sometimes. Oh like God. Ube. I don't know. All right. Anyway, the point being. The uh, the fact is that they bought them and then suddenly they're like, yeah, we're going to make this now an exclusive Xbox thing, right? Okay. That That's a, a big negative because that was the first time, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, uh, that it felt like a company was making games for both consoles and then someone bought it and they cut off the marketplace for a huge, like, Sony got hurt by Bethesda being bought okay. by sure. Xbox, right? So now you've cut them off. So that's different to me than someone saying, well, look at Final Fantasy or some of these other people having exclusive agreements with PlayStation or mm -hmm. like Spider-Man. Oh, you could play Spider-Man on PlayStation, on Xbox, it's unfair. I'm like, if you develop it yourself, it's not unfair. If you develop it in your own studios, it's not unfair. Like buying, like there was a reciprocation suddenly of them having to go and buy Bungie, right? They just have to buy somebody. But now you've taken away all these third party middle tier places so that then everybody will be owned by either Sony, Nintendo or Xbox. Mm -hmm. And that's a little dangerous, right? Which is like, there'll be no independent medium to large size developers left anymore. It will either be indie or AAA. And then everything will get siloed and it does hurt competition and innovation and the ability to do anything because then you're sort of beholden to all these people like so that's that's where i'm like yeah it's a little bit of a tough one because buying they are going to take call of duty and make it exclusive at some point for sure they want to like that's that was the point of buying them and when you take bigger holds of the market share it just makes sense the cloud services that they're offering could potentially grow for the PlayStation customers who don't want to invest in the hardware. I mean, I get it. it, it it's a smart play across King the board from a business yeah. perspective. You get it. It's just, yeah. is it good for us as gamers as a whole? No, options are always better. Competition is always better yeah. across the board. I actually, I want to, I have a question that I thought of while you were talking about this. And like, this was another thing in gaming this year. Not necessarily, obviously, we wait, went way past the quick scope section of this. I would this say a, an elongated quick scope. <laughs> there's the union unionization of a lot of things this past year. That's been a 2022 hot topic yeah. across the board. Starbucks has been trying to unionize. We have people in Blizzard Activation trying to unionize after all the scandals. Like, do you think that the effect of unionization in gaming, especially in gaming industries or gaming um, platforms? would offset some of the negative influence or negative impact of a merger like that? Or do you think that the idea of unionization is more of a red herring for what is actually happening? Because what I'm thinking, I have two minds, right? Where it's mm -hmm. this merger, 
I do agree with you completely. I think it's going to fuck people up, going to fuck me as a consumer because I have PlayStation right now. I don't want to buy an Xbox, but I will. I will go back and buy an Xbox because I want to play, you know, Starfield, whatever the case is. Yeah. That's fine. But when you unionize, when you have people who are, say, um, working for you against that idea, they have some power, some flex. I'm curious how that could impact, say, the decisions, the head company makes in this case microsoft on how they deploy let's say their resources moving forward you think i think correlation or no i think that the unionization effort is going to be hurt because for them to be as close as they were at activision blizzard to succeeding and then to be thrown into a merger the whole process <laughs> restarted right and I you're now so. not going against activision blizzard you're going against microsoft Right, right. And right. and as much as you know, Microsoft has these real wonderful, like, yo, we are gonna play it really forward and be like, I'm like, dog, you've been sued for antitrust before. Like it's in that company. I've even joked about it. I'm like, it's sort of in their DNA to do this because it's happened before. And would I put it past them to pull something like that unless it was pulled in? Well, yeah, I mean, unless they were sued by the FTC and demanded of to make certain provisions so that they wouldn't do that it neutralizes to a degree the value of what they were doing right right but the remember if you remember way back when phil harrison said they were competing with amazon and google now and i think this is like why you said with the cloud gaming their attempt because otherwise if google had bought bethesda and then oh man this company and then they brought them into stadia now it's a different ball game but overall, I, I don't think that they'll win the the lawsuit or they'll settle it with those provisions. Where, where I'm like, if they go take this all the way through the court process and then it's like an actual suing, I'd be surprised. But Microsoft also have been seemingly very cool about everything. So I don't have a reason to doubt the sincerity of their approach. Mm-hmm. But the idea that they're like sort of catching like a stray for the most part because everyone's really mad at tech and they they just did the sort of biggest move like that you could actually do anything about like it should have been this much like let's like just, oh my god talk about how much money it is by the way just yeah, how much money they were buying activision <laughs> someone should have been sued when twitter was being sold because twitter is an inherent important functional communication good oh, versus like this and i'm like yo i get hey, it hey. but like activision blizzard call of duty franchises all of the world of warcraft stuff you have overwatch too you overwatches in general i guess you'd say you've got starcraft warcraft just like World it gives them the Asian market and it gives them the just, mobile market, it's which is insane. Candy Crush, they, all that stuff. Yeah, you're right. But like, they don't have any presence in the mobile Zynga market. Zynga was bought. It's just, whew. so yeah. You can see, they have that. You can see now PlayStation's version of a strategy is to turn their high end IP into high end television. So right. they're sort of like a movie. They're Sony. They're a movie production and game. All their games are going to be cinematic and movie, movie hardware. And then, yeah. 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 And Nintendo is just like, fuck you, doesn't matter. Go buy Pokemon Scarlet <laughs> and Violet. <laughs> Our characters are cute and they're gonna last the yeah. test of time. Maybe yeah. they're gonna recycle. Pokemon is what esports needs. So, and what I mean by that is, and I'm gonna clarify, they want to be generational like traditional sports were. But the most generational thing I've seen in my life is Pokemon because I see that we grew up with it in our direct adolescent childhood. And now I see our exact generation giving the kids the same stuff that they grew up with, right? Mm -hmm. Like the exact same Pokemon stuff. Like they're gonna, why is there so many younger Pokemon fans? Because there's a new generation of parents who grew up on Pokemon who are making younger kids Pokemon fans. Okay. And so like that is generational. Like East White, all like Mets, like Yankees fans, like, Oh, my dad was a Yankee fan, therefore I'm a Yankee fan, which I'm not. I'm a Mets fan, so that's not the point. But whoever's <laughs> whoever's parent is a fan, that creates that generational gap. Like, and the idea of evaluating what they did was poorly done. So that was a relevant side note. But I was gonna say we're off topic at the same always time. funny, oh, pretty. But yeah, so that's all we got. Um, so 
Oh yeah, so yeah, and Nintendo's gonna make movies. Nintendo's a new Disney. They got all it's the IP. Be a lot of different video game media coming out, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm actually very excited about it. I mean, The Last of Us should be an awesome show on HBO. If HBO makes great shows, mm-hmm. that's what they're known for. So yeah, exactly, it be, it's sweet. I'm actually excited, not having played the games myself, or at least not the entire game. Also, Halo Infinite flopped. So as much as we're talking about FTC suing them, I think Microsoft needs these other games because they don't have to develop their own. Because for me, I enjoyed is, playing it immensely. But then there's how a long play. for how long? I played it for like probably three or four months. Like I was in Diamond, I was crushing it. It was yeah. great. That was right in the beginning. To yeah. be honest, I have only played it once since then, since it came out. That's what I mean. Because I loved it in the beginning too, and I thought the game. But that's what I'm like. Flops to me means that like its player count drops like maybe ninety percent, mm. right? Like that's but a that's flop. Just the nature of video games, right? Because the the landscape is yeah but they money. they sold it as something bigger like call of duty doesn't have that drop granted they, they drop come out every with a game year. every six fucking months it's so yeah. stupid just like fifa it's like it, every fucking year it's the same shit recycled over and mm. over and over and so i'm actually curious so halo if, just released something every single year they'd be better I'm, off i almost think that it's about recycling and utilizing rather okay here this is probably just the business case. I'm sure they're already operating under this too. Instead of no, creating a new engine, every they time, ain't operating under anything over there. I'm just saying, instead of you like having that high upkeep, keeping talented people to create a new engine and increase the technology and get to the next level, you just recycle, use the same engine and just reskin because that's what fucking Call of Duty and FIFA are. Guess what? You're gonna make so much money without that overhead because that overhead of trying to create a technology goes so far down. You still make that profit every year. Every single year of just the rescan, sure, you add one or two new features. You change it a little bit here and there. If they did that, I mean, that's not what they're known for. Don't get me wrong. They, they push the boundaries every time. And I guess it's based off of the the history of the series itself, where every time you played a new Halo game, you knew you were in for a treat, aka yeah. something new was coming in, whatever. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of funny, actually, now that I think about it. Call of Duty, fucking <laughs> FIFA, EA, like you think of those games madden you already know what to expect and yet you still eat it up and you still eat it up even though you like they have done such a good job of training the consumer base which is us us gamers to expect the same thing and still play it you know yeah i don't know 100%. what should halo pivot to then that's a good question hmm. they're going to do a uh a, a battle royale for sure i mean they, that's been announced that they're in that one's in development so that probably oh, be oh i didn't hear that that's fucking sweet yeah a halo yeah. battle royale would actually be kind of dope not gonna lie that's not a third person halo battle royale God, that'd be fucking awesome so like as long as they're willing to to work with the product a little bit because i i think xbox is great and i think game pass is fucking spectacular for even its flaws because sometimes I do realize that pricing is a little funny because if you're paying 15 a month say it's going to take me three months to play a game right and so right, at right. that degree I'm paying 45 like for it so when I see it for switch for 50 I'm like should I just buy it and I'm like oh no I get it for free on xbox and it's like right over time so the subscription model is the future but playstation has a great point of when they mention it for themselves which is the reason Xbox has such trouble doing first party development is that they probably don't have the bulk sums of money at times to generate to give to budgets, right? So like mm-hmm. I see. You know what I mean? So the the big influx of cash allows Hey, we don't have project. literally 200 mil liquid to give to yeah. a production studio to do this yeah. and then, you know, not guarantee that it's a loss for us because sometimes when you're creating a game, I know that studios just fucking go under. There's internal strife, there's a, you know, uh, misappropriations of funding you just didn't ex- the game didn't turn out the way you expected it to and then all of a sudden funding gets pulled but that's i get where you're coming from where you yeah. just need a lot of cash on hand to fund up front get yeah. them started and then know that you're gonna get your product at the end it's like yeah exactly versus like you'll get the money over time but unless you have additional abilities like they don't they have zero revenue incomes that give them a bump at any point other than peripherals so that's why they always sell all this random shit that's accompanied like st- like controller hoodies and stuff. It's stupid, but <laughs> um, that was uh, pretty much everything. Yeah, we we missed one big one, which Ooh. was uh, EA 
loses FIFA. Oh, oh, yes. Then losing FIFA was fucking hilarious. Yeah. But EA Sports FC, baby, still yeah, making exactly. money. <laughs> still yeah, EA still is. Work. <laughs> it is EA, bro. You're gonna, everyone's going to buy it next year and play it. And Every FIFA. Premier League player is going to buy it. Every soccer fan, every football fan, whatever you want to call it. FIFA's going to be re-signing with them within a year when they realize that they sell equally as well because they still have all of the fucking licensing. Mm-hmm. deals for everybody which i don't really understand what fifa does then. fifa just takes money from places to host the world cup that's that's what i think fifa does yeah i just out there and they get bribed too even yep. though bribed too and it's just i know when qatar got chosen i was like oh my god how much money did they give and now oh, everyone's oh, like greatest must- world cup ever oh it's the worst so thank you global warming for allowing <laughs> Uh, a Let's beautiful have a World Cup in a desert, and yeah. in winter when it's still too fucking hot. Let's do that. It's and good. it worked, bro. I I remember thinking, being like, "What are they gonna do here?" And yeah. shit, it worked. Oh uh, Jesus! <laughs> we don't oh, and it. and and the Steam Deck came out this year. Mm. Steam Deck. Do you, what do you think? What do you think about the Steam Deck? Uh, I like how it's a mini PC. I think the people who buy it have super fun. I actually equate the people who buy a Steam Deck to the same market as the people who bought the PSP. So mm-hmm. like I never, I had a PS2, I had a PS3. I never bought a PSP in between because I had the consoles. But there are gamers who love gaming on the go. Um, yeah. I, don't remember, I have a Switch now too. So I'm kind of yeah. like pot calling the kettle black later in life. And I do bring it with me everywhere. It's just, it wasn't in it for me. I mean, I, I don't want to compromise, let's say, the experience of playing my Steam games, aka yeah. Apex Legends, or like what anything in scripts. I've never you played know? Apex. You know, say what? I never. I know. Excuse me. I thought you said, I thought we were talking about Valor. And the one question is, how does the 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 mouse translate to a Joy Cons? That's a, the biggest one, isn't it? Inherently I, off. I mean, it's, it's kind of just like how how do you navigate menus on Xbox or PlayStation? It's the same exact premise. Um, it's it's pretty seamless. Don't get me wrong. They have a lot of conversions on the UI. Like they did a very good job with the hardware. And I love the fact that it's jailbroken already. So you can add whatever the fuck you want. It's really a, a windows platform that you could just fuck around with. Yeah. So, All right. I might check it out. It's good hardware. Also it's, it's affordable. It really is yeah. um, affordable. The only thing is I hear the battery life needs to be better. And I mean, to that point, it is more powerful than a switch, right? A lot of problems. You as a fan of Pokemon, I wanted to bring this up. You as a fan of Pokemon, you played Violet or Scarlet or whatever the fuck? No, not yet. Okay. Well, those look too stupid for me. <laughs> they look stupid because apparently there's a shit ton of glitches. And there's a lot of glitches because in development, you can't polish everything. You don't have really the resources on the hardware itself to do everything you want. So things are really wonky. Mm. And that's been mm. a lot of the uh, discussion on the interwebs that I've seen where People were asking for a Switch Pro so you have stronger hardware to be able to have less performance issues, aka you have more resources allocated to do the things that the gamers actually want to do and that the uh, creators actually want to create. So right now, I'm placed like for the fucking Pokemon game. Don't get me wrong; they had a lot of QA sessions, quality assurance. That's what QA means in house to try to fix it. But like when you're running on five year old hardware, it's like. Cool. We had this grand scheme for this open world, for this fun. I think they're adventure. gonna announce the pro alongside um, the second Breath of the Wild. Uh, that would be fucking awesome. But yeah. you know, I, that'll I, be that'll be in the last part. That'll be in future speculations, though. Fair, but fair, fair, fair. all right. Okay. So, anything else we're missing here? Any other big stories come to mind as we mm-hmm. peruse our list here? Uh, um, GTA leak probably. Just interesting because people, Grand Theft Auto being one of the most uh, fabulously wealthy enterprises or fabulously wealthy games to ever exist and still existing. Just Grand Theft Auto 6 is going to be that much bigger. The records that GTA 6 is going to break are going going to be mind-boggling. It's going to be stupid. It's going to be stupid. It's going to be stupid. Like It's going to be stupid the amount of money they make. Um, But anyway, that's... Rockstar, let's go. Yeah, I know. Seriously. Uh, take two, this EA. It's all connected. Um, okay. So that's all we got for news stories for the most <laughs> part. It was, it, we had, we talked a lot about random things, but for the most part, it was a pretty slow year. Um, I think a lot of the 2022 schedule got pushed to 2023. Right. Um, 
you know, shout out Cyberpunk for scaring the shit out of everybody in 2021. And they're like, right. <laughs> because because of how bad of a flop it was, everyone got terrified uh, and made sure yeah, they had to do the like, the, yeah, basically. yeah. They're like, yo, if you have those sort of like game breaking glitches, you don't want to be cyberpunk. <laughs> and so, but funny enough, they they actually had the fucking gall, the balls to 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 release a game of the year edition for cyberpunk. Uh, Cyberpunk, like, Game of the Year Edition, Fallout like, 6, Game of the Year Edition. A lot of these companies that never won Game of the Year have Game of the Year Edition. Yeah. It's, it's like weird. World's Best Pizza vibes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. New York, well, we got well, in LA. World's yeah. Best Game, yo. Number one <laughs> rated show on the po- on YouTube here. It's Based like, on what criteria? Don't worry. Our own baby. That's all exactly. that matters. People have said, and we're two people, so boom. <laughs> Uh, I love it. I love right. it. So now we're on to best game of the year. So um, mm. I, I I will start this one. Okay. Even though I didn't play time, but for me, it was easy. It was Ragnarok. Mm. I get there's, it. A, there's not a lot released between the year because uh, it started with Elden Ring. So I know you, you haven't played Ragnarok just yet. No, I, I haven't beat Ragnarok yet. I have played okay, it. I played think it's it. phenomenal. Definitely agree with you. Probably a great choice. I mean, did you play Elden Ring? So it's the best part. I have Elden. I have not played Elden. And what I'm curious about, and really what I'm most reflective about, is two phenomenal games from two separate groups. Obviously, we know the studios that have built them. That's fantastic. They do very different things. One's an open world RPG. You can do whatever the fuck you want. One's very much a narrative. It's yeah. awesome to see two separate games polished to the degree that they were. Yeah. Uh, at least on paper, because I haven't played Elden Ring, like I said, polished across reviews as you've read them uh, yeah, yeah. and see like just how receptive the gaming community is to those two different mediums. They both are fantastic. To me, it's just interesting that Elden Ring won Game of the Year, right? Over yeah. a narrative. It seems like people, in my mind, what that resonates with is people want the creativity. Elden Ring is a, understand it. And I'm excited. Elden Ring was a, was, was a cultural moment for some reason. Really? Yeah, you, like, you, like if you were on Twitter, like Elden Ring became a thing, like I mean, a really big thing. And like, I don't know why. I think it's because it was still sort of the tail end, like the last parts of the pandemic. Because okay. it came out like early 2022, right? It came out like February 2022. From software, yeah. Early yeah. in the year, you had everyone playing it, everyone and their mother. And you had yeah. crazy things. But I think it's the ability for people to play however that they want at all it's always known for excuse me difficulty and it was the first time that you had a game that's really open world with a a dark souls like game let's say but Mm. as i understand it like you can do so many different things there's so much creativity involved you can build however you want about breath of the wild too and that shit's on Unbearable. Yeah, exactly. We love Breath of the Wild still. People are still no, playing no, it today. No, no, no. We we is a very strong word. You, you love Breath of the Wild? No. Have you have you not oh listened to an, a single episode oh, in God. all these years? Yes. Of no, that man. is the most overrated game Ignore in the world. This, Ignore it. Right? Bro, Wind Waker is easily the best Zelda game in the entire I don't series. deny that because Wind Waker was fucking fantastic. And Whatever. the idea of stamina bars is just no. It's no go. I mean, you need to have it. You need to have it. No, it. no, no, no. And, and that's a, that's it about, see, I, as much as I joke, I don't like it. That's just because those open world non-narrative style games aren't my preference. I like narrative. Yeah, there you go. Focus. But see, I have a question now. How long, how many hours do you have in God of War? Uh, I think I have 20, 20. Does it feel so like this was some of the question I was reading because I didn't play Elden Ring. I don't like soul style games. I, I get really frustrated if you keep dying in a game. I get it. And but I see the I see the drive and I see the selling point for a lot of people. So that's why I'm like, this is how people need to view games to be like, hey, that's not my thing. But I understand why everybody loves it and why they like it. It does not affect me. Therefore, I don't need to talk shit about it. Right. It can be good in its own merits. Except for Breath of the Wild, which sucks. But my point being. uh, What was your question? (laughs) You had a question. um, Does it feel like DLC to you? Does it feel like God of War 2018 DLC? I see. Does it feel Uh, like they spent five years of development on this game? It's actually funny you say that because 
that was a, a thing that someone brought up the other day when I was talking about it. They were like, what's different about it? Because it feels just exactly the same as, you know, another game. And to a degree, yes, I think that was done intentionally, meaning the controls are the same. You understand how to play. You have the experience of the two characters. You're immediately picked up and you're right behind Kratos. And like, that's exactly where you were when you left off. If that makes sense. So there's a continuity of the games. I like that. I like that where it was like putting on a glove or a, a pair of pants you've worn before, that kind of thing. Things fit yeah. snugly. Like yeah. you get it. There's an anticipation. I was more excited for the story because I love good storytelling and you yeah. knew you were in for a fucking ride yeah. after that first one. Um, the gameplay is fantastic. And when I say gameplay, I mean the combat and action is so polished, so refined. You can do so many cool things and yeah. They just paced it so well. So it's so pretty cool to start with both weapons simultaneously. Right. Time. There you go. Exactly. You picked up. That's already yes. a boost before the big reveal was when Kratos and then spoiler alert, by the way, you know, yes. in the yeah, first one, you got his, played. Oh my God, the chains. That's awesome. Now you get both, but even when you get your third weapon and I won't even say what it is in this game, it's awesome. You know, you're going to get a third weapon. There's a potential for something else going on down the line that I can see in the future. And I don't know. Yeah. I'm really just enjoying the lore and it's yeah. weird because i typically don't play games for the lore right you play games for the gameplay and sometimes for the story but story is not synonymous with lore right yeah. lore is like okay that's superfluous it's more i'm invested in the moment and the present mm-hmm. um i'm playing every fucking side quest i'm trying yeah. to fucking platinum this I game did, yeah it's, you know it's just i'm trying to do everything and uh it was just it works for me. It resonates with me, yeah. but also it's funny. I'm the gamer. unlike you where I will like Elden Ring. I like the frustration. I like the fact that I'm going to beat this boss. Even if I die 12 times, because it's fucking having God of war. And I played on fucking God of war mode 20 times. I died 21 times. I'm coming back. <laughs> I'm going back for it. Uh, You're just going to be frustration and, and monster and, to death. It's going to be awesome. And exercise and frustration is all that is. Yeah, no, I mean, it is, it is, but. But I also understand that, right? That's a challenge. There's a personal challenge element where for me, I'm like, I'd like to be challenged, but not frustrated. No, I mean, you can enjoy gaming, you enjoy gaming. That's like, that's what people do. It's fine. There's also people who love, like, let's say Stardew Valley. Like all you need to do is you build a farm and you talk to your neighbors and like, it's great. Yeah. No. And Harvest Moon is the same way. Think of that in nature. Like you can enjoy just the journey and just, playing for fun and having no worries nothing else now again now speaking of the future Mm. let's think about some speculations that we have for the future so based off all the convo we touched on basically everything happening we didn't really talk about the big game releases coming out next year but I mean, you know, that's where my future speculation is going to go. Yeah. By the way. So, all right. So give me, give me what you think the top selling game of 2023 of hands down hands. breath of the wild Two. Uh, there is going to be Starfield is going to give it a run for its money for sure. Because people love Bethesda games, Bethesda, Hogwarts. but I will say breath of the wild Two is probably going to win game of the year. If I had to guess, um, I'm going to call it right now. December 30th, 2022. Next year at the end, you're going to see Breath of the Wild 2 winning game of the year. Mm, does that game Judas come out this year or no? Oh, I, I have no idea. Uh, no, that's a, it's a, the new Bioshock game. It's not uh, actually Bioshock, but it's from Ken Levine. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. You don't think Hogwarts Mystery or Hogwarts whatever it is? Hogwarts Legacy. We're Legacy. both going to play it and we're both yeah. going to like it. I don't know if we're going to love it. Like it won't win game of the year, bro. I I'm telling you right now, I think it looks not game of the year, but the top selling game of the year. Oh, I don't think so. And I I think that because people who are fans of Harry Potter don't necessarily play video games. Right. And I don't think they're going to go about and buy a console. It being a PlayStation five and Xbox game just for that one in particular. People who have it and our fans will absolutely get it. I think it'll be an immediate grab just to try it out, but yeah, no, I don't think it will be the top selling game. People, more people have switches than care about like Harry Potter, if that makes sense. So like, Harry Potter. I'm just, what? That's Harry Potter ones. Oh, oh, <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. So you're talking about something like this? Ooh, see, I like that. I've wanted to get the illustrated ones. The illustrated ones are fucking awesome. 
They are. Yeah. So have you have you actually ever tried to read them? Yeah. Well, you gave me. <laughs> uh, as soon as I got them, I started rereading the whole series. It's even funnier because I donated the Costco set. We're getting off topic, but I donated. I had a Costco set for seventy yeah. bucks, and I re- read them when I got the first one, and so I did it again, and I did it again. So yeah, I'm gonna get all of them again. Illustrated, baby. Yeah, I think I might have to see. I just I had like the little dragon. Oh, says, sick! Yeah, that's like that is the Costco one. Yeah, yeah that's the exact yeah. one I had, and then I donated it because I got these. That's funny. I got the OGs at home. I don't like. There's no reason to have three sets of the same book, you know. I don't know about that, man. You know me. I, I always buy multiple. Say we're probably away from our mic, but I, I buy multiple copies of the same books all the time. I got gotcha. you. Okay, yeah, but I enjoy it. But the point being. Harry Potter. All right. I agree. I, I'm going to have a tough time disagreeing that. Uh, I mean, like, what are you looking forward to next year? Let's go with that. Other than Hogwarts Legacy, clearly we're going to get that. Uh, I I wonder if we're going to get GTA 6. Mm. Is there any big, big tie? I'm trying to think, oh, like, what big games are coming out next year. Let me rattle off yeah. some and advanced wars. I'm looking forward to advanced wars. Interesting. Yeah. You weird. Yeah, because that's tactical. That's XCOM South. Like Ooh, wild card here. I actually a lot of a lot of good ones. I'm gonna throw it out there. All right, talk to okay. me. Fire Emblem Engage apparently is coming out next year. Forspoken coming out next year. I don't even care. Hogwarts Legacy. We both talked about Wild Hearts. We haven't heard of Skull and Bones is going to be the Pirates game. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's been right, it looks forever. cool, rather. Yeah. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. That's oh, coming. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't Dude, like that's that. A wild did you card. like the first one? I did. I beat it. I crushed it. It was, awesome. it was like a Souls like, and I didn't like that. Oh, what? <laughs> it's a great game. It's, it's a fun canon, game. Baby. It's yeah. canon. That's what's cool about it, even though yeah. I have no idea what's going on in Star Wars. But like, The Last Jedi is canon. <laughs> It was so good. So good. Okay. Uh, Resident 4, Resident Evil 4, sorry. The remake is coming out. Okay, fine. Who cares? Yeah. Alan 2, again, who cares? No offense. Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. So that's going to be Breath of the Wild 2, as we have dubbed it, but it's called Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, Suicide Squad is coming out. Oh, that one looked interesting. I saw Batman pull up. In that. Yeah, but it's, the question is, did you games. Arkham Knights this year? No, God, no. Yeah, me neither. And like, uh, I think like, that's what it feels like to me. So it is yeah, weird. why would I play a game that doesn't have Batman in it? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, I used to say that when they made that Fox show way back when called Gotham. They're like, <laughs> what if you watch a Batman show with no fucking Batman? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you people? <laughs> like, who's like, but, and then I'm like, I say that. And then people are like, oh, let's watch the Agents of Shield television show. And no offense if you do watch it. I just don't fucking understand. Mm, I get and it. So I get it. Okay. But to each their own. So I, I should have put it under there, but to each their own doesn't <laughs> mean I can't fucking roast you for watching Agent's Shield. I'm sorry. Right, Street Fighter Six. That's fine. Everyone loves a like fighting game person. Okay. Diablo. Did 4. you play did you play that Warner Brothers one? Um Mm, the suicide nuts the, the looney tunes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah brawlers yeah. whatever it's called no i have yeah. not obviously i don't even know the name so neither do you <laughs> I, I played it for a couple of minutes oh okay okay yeah. was it anime squad or animation squad or no no no, no. it's uh, like here what is it mate no sucker punch oh multiverses multiverses, multiverses. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah multiverses yeah multiverse no, didn't have a good year. no i didn't play it it's fine. Oh shit! I forgot about this. Final Fantasy 16. I'm a huge Final Fantasy nerd. That's gonna be exciting. Is it gonna beat Starfield? No, I think Starfield's gonna win that. There's Redfall coming out. The Wolf Among Us two. We don't care about Exo Primal. We don't care about Spider Man two. Is gonna come out. Yes. No, that's gonna be a that good, good that. Year. Okay, no, no, no. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Spider Man two as my top game of the year because I think thought so? oh, yeah. Shit. Uh, for now, like. Over I'm, Starfield, I'm, over fucking Tears of the Kingdom for Breath of the Wild. Over Starfield, I'm really Legacy? excited for. Star Wars. So Starfield, I'm really excited for. Even though I didn't play the Elder Scroll games like that. So like they never spoke with me. Even Outer Worlds was a little boring. I don't I don't like inventory management games, like for the most part. So I'm hoping this game's a little less of that and a little bit more action oriented or at least interesting. So it looks awesome from everything I've seen. So it has my interest, and it's going to be free if you have Game Pass for the most part, because that's true. You know, that, so that's that true. that's a huge plus because 
it's like when persona comes out i'm like do i buy it for the switch or do i play it on xbox but the switch is convenient switch. but the point being spider-man 2 when i played the first one i was like this game is incredible but the second one's going to be a masterpiece because they figure the swinging is what they focus all their time on into the first Funny game. Because it's the third one, really, if you think about it, because they had Miles Morales come out between them. But yeah, yeah. I, how much smoother was Miles Morales than Spider-Man? I didn't play it, so I will take your word for it. But that's interesting because I liked it. I didn't love it. I don't know. It was great. It was awesome. And it was just yeah. sort of a hack and slash. It felt like a, a yeah, chore. Boring. It was it was like the arc of the end. It was like the Batman end, but with Spider-Man. Right, right, right. You actually now, you do all three Arkham's, right? So that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, but that's where I was like, once you guys actually figured out the repetitiveness of the game, of the side missions and everything but the swinging, mm-hmm. the storyline was great too. But right. yeah, I think with time and then like, even with Tears of the Fallen Kingdom, like, I mean, how different can they really be? It's not like they're going to have an actual storyline there. Yeah. You're going to have different abilities, bro. Link is oh, going to no go way. down for a hundred years, but what happens? Well, what okay, rather, at the end of this, you know he goes down for 100 years and then cue Breath of the Wild, but... Is this a be, prequel? This is a prequel, technically, yes. Oh, really? I thought this was a sequel. No, I mean... My like storyline time-wise, too. It's a prequel, not a sequel. So he, you know, the start of Breath of the Wild is he wakes up from a 100-year coma and he's like, yo, what the fuck? I don't even know who I am. And so you find his memories, right? That's the premise. And you do that and you... There's no premise to that game, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point. There technically isn't, but you're just trying to find his memories. That's all. And then you fight and kill Ganon. And this one goes into how Ganon rose to power, I think, if I had to guess, how the kingdom fell, and then why you fell into a coma. Granted, you kind of know why you fell into a coma, but point being, you're going to see the whole arc. I do think they're going to give you different abilities, different characters to see and meet and flesh out the world. I think there'll be a third one. Uh, I mean, this would be, that would be even cooler, but probably not, no. If I oh, had Wind to guess, it'd be Wind Waker 2. <laughs> That'd be so cool. Wind Waker was just so good. Wind we Wind can agree so on that. We yeah. both absolutely devoured that game. Yeah. If there was 100% you could do on GameCube, we both yeah. did it just because we yeah. played that forever. And so, thanks yeah. to you, I was able to play because I borrowed your GameCube. There you go. Yeah, I, I gave it to you. Um, yeah. I remember, remember playing Pikmin, like how yeah. fun that was. Ugh, yeah, so. I like Pikmin 3 a lot. I played a little bit through a demo and I was like, if it's ever on sale, I might buy it. It feels good. It feels yeah. real good, actually. I might buy Mario Rabbids, the new one. It's on like, bro, and off. I have it. It's yeah. fucking phenomenal. Anyone? Yeah, see, that's not like games. It's so good. So yeah. good. The first one was amazing. Thing. I go to every airplane. Every ride, I'm just playing Mario. Like, that's how I beat it, which is funny. But like, you know, that is a perfect airplane game. That's All right. So, what are the speculations, guys? Uh, I think esports is gonna have another rough year. Hmm. Okay. For sure. One hundred percent. They're gonna be not in the clear because now they have to figure out a revenue model, um, and that's that's going to be ugly for a lot of places. And so, it's going to be sort of a, a cleansing. And I take this all back to I blame it on. The Overwatch League is the reason gaming is this, in the state it's in. Yeah. Because they turned it into this like spectacle and turned it into $20 million buy ins and fast forwarded what the actual reality of what esports was so fast, so forward that no, it, get it. It, there couldn't be a reality to it anymore. And then every game subsequently developed in those years either tried to turn itself into an esport or turn itself into a battle royale. So Fortnite and Overwatch League really combined to ruin gaming for about five years. And then narrative gaming and indie gaming saved it. You know, hindsight's 2020. It's hard to say if they did the wrong thing at the time. Like if, if you had the Oh, they did the wrong thing. They, you know, hindsight's 2020 and then even yeah, at the time like, to be people like. People paid the $20 million. So like who's really wrong there? Yeah, if, but people invested in FTX. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. That was going to be. You don't need hindsight. It's like you know the, in hindsight. You think you can make money, dude? FTX got a fucking sports arena named after it because they had convinced people it was so good. And part of doing the job is having good media. Bro, Meaning, I just, I, I think crazy. every single person who but approved yeah. all of those deals needs to take a nice long hard look in the mirror and be like, I know. agree. You need to reflect, but that is not saying that at the time you didn't make the right decision with the information you had available to you. All signs pointed up for Owls, 
for you know crypto for all those things. I know. I I, I thought Owl would look like incredible. I always thought the buy-in price was a little excessive, but I mean, it started out at ten mil, and then we we covered it going to twenty mil. We're like, what yeah. the fuck? And then yeah. you had the Call of Duty leagues coming out, and then remember seeing a couple of the games being played live in the stadium and how fucking unreal it was, and just being like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like you're you're in there, you have the five on fives across the board, and you have the quad screens up on the top and everyone in the arena is going crazy and like there was crazy. a high to it at the time and to a degree it's arguable that the pandemic killed it more than it being a bad idea right I, I, I think the economic downturn you're right where like pandemic sucks follow it up with people need money in their pockets it's hard to do that and what are you going to do you're not going to spend it on a video game that you see on the screen that's really one of a dozen that you could watch well, that's the time. thing, right? Because you could still, like, the esports problem is that, like, even if you bought the game already and you watch it, other than advertising money, like, no one really gets anything, right? Mm -hmm. They really retain viewership with doing in-game giveaways now, like, to be like, oh, watch this for an hour and then you'll get something. Yeah, That's why all the codes now are watch a streamer for an hour and then you'll randomly get a code drop. Mm -hmm. Like... That shit is nonsense, but it retains viewership. But the point being, uh, yeah, esports have a tough one. Netflix gaming, X, uh, Xbox, uh, Microsoft, FTC, win or lose. I do think the FTC is going to block it. At least I hope they do. That's yeah. my hope. What do I actually think is going to happen? I don't know. Uh, the way these things play out, I would hope that they block it and that things that are turbulent in the gaming world in terms of where these uh, IPs that you know and love are going to go and settle yeah. kind of gets resolved. That's what I would hope for gaming. And the way they're pushing it, like you understand completely why they're doing it. Think about how much money from a pure like fucking pie chart scale Activision and Blizzard take up. Yeah. Maybe it's like only 10, 15, 20%. That's still fucking huge for the, how big the market is as a whole. You know, I, this is anecdotal. And actually PlayStation, it PlayStation, a lot of their money actually comes from Call of Duty as well. And so yeah. the threat of Call of Duty being taken away in full from them were put on Game Pass, that cuts into yeah. their market in a pretty severe way. And so... So I, I do think the FTC will be successful in blocking it, which could pave the way for future legislation and really just precedence, because that's how law works in America. Mm -hmm precedents down the line of you want to gobble someone up it's gonna be that much harder so competition will be hopefully that much better moving forward this is the type of stuff that should have been done for when disney went on a buying spree and i, mean, I think after marvel star wars everything i yeah, get it. after marvel and star wars someone should have been like all right guy i know and there i don't think it was a discussion that they didn't have i just depending on who i don't think it was a consideration in terms of what it is even here which is like it's like Google, right? You can't say Google's monopoly because it's like, all right, go go to another search engine. No one's forcing you, right? Mm -hmm. But the market funnel would be forced into Microsoft in this. I mean, region. exactly. Like no one's gonna have the same capabilities because they've built up such a lead. I mean, that's that's the argument you have with big tech. That's the argument people have with billionaires. The argument people have with a lot of other yeah. Things. But that also used to be how consoles sold, right? Which it was like, which sold more, Xbox, PlayStation? It was which one do my friends have more of? Right. No, no. I mean, I agree with that. Let's also compare that to the fucking what was the um, what was the one Sega Genesis? Yeah, yeah. Not, not Sega Genesis. What was the fuck? Saturn, the Dreamcast, Dreamcast. There you go. Yeah, the yeah. Dreamcast and shit like that. Like, yeah, sorry, you had like three games. The one game that was cool was the Jewel Marvel game. Vers I can't remember. Marvel vs. Capcom Two was up in there. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Driver, so Simpsons game. I was a Dreamcast proponent. I forgot. Yeah, there's a couple of them, but just not the same as that. The digital memory cards in the middle. <laughs> I just remember, yeah, having the controllers with the giant fucking square in the center. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you can have your profile. Yeah. And the little guy on it. I remember, like, write you when you play it. But the point being, um, yeah. Big companies yeah. are always going to do big company things. Yeah. Flex you blah. Blah. Yeah. So, uh oh, cool. getting flexed. Getting flexed. And. That is where Nintendo has a great advantage, which is they're so insulated that no one can say anything. I think they need to do something to shake it up. Uh, it's funny because 
Nintendo has positioned itself as always the additional console, meaning there are certain houses that will have it just by themselves. Sure, it's family oriented, great. Well, but then the they Switch will... is the best selling console out of everything. I know, but like is. what I'm saying is for for gamers like yourself and I, they're the plus one. You'll never think twice because of the price point about not getting a Switch. You'll always yeah. get it. Like you're like, yeah. all right, fuck it, three hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. And then That's all I know. Mario games, absolutely. So it is the additional, let's say. Um, accessory that I have in my gaming bag repertoire. But I play it more than I play the other two consoles. So I'm like, even though it's a plus console, like it gets the most playing time because it is, it's convenience. And that's where like, even if a game is on Game Pass and on Switch, I have a tough time justifying playing it on Game Pass because I know the convenience factor. Right. And R- JRPGs and tactical games automatically switch. There you go. I, yeah. It's found its niche and it's actually arguably flexing that better than the other studios and the other studios are fighting for these big brand name games that do make a lot at first, but like Nintendo's Nintendo got this IP. Pokemon, bro. They don't and need to do anything. Just saying it's generational, like to your point, like they're, it's also nature of the timing, right? Nintendo did start earlier and they got everyone hooked earlier. And then you had the N64, which is, I would argue, a majority of IP. It's now. all about IP. Like, but, you know, Nintendo has all the IP. Right. Like, they have the fantastic IP that started when our older siblings or other people who are having kids now of the age to get into gaming. Like, you talk about games, right? The first no, there are two generations because there's the older hardcore. generation that grew up with like the 80s version of Blink. Yeah. And it's us who grew up with N64 Link. Yep. And now it's going to be the kids who grew up the Switch Link. Exactly. Yeah. And, and they just, they're all going to miss the best Link. They hit it at the right time. And the 80s was a, a the fucking golden age of video games in the sense of creating characters that lasted throughout. Pay your boy. But yeah. yeah, but that's what it is, right? Those characters, those creations, like it's almost like Disney, man. I'm telling you, I keep saying it to everyone. If you're listening, you want some stock advice, buy Nintendo. I've been buying Nintendo relentlessly. Buy Nintendo. <laughs> buy Nintendo. Yep. Don't buy you don't crypto. Don't want to buy FaZe. FaZe Clan, baby. FaZe, FaZe Clan. Clan. FaZe Clan started at 13. Now they're at 193. $13 and they're at $193? No, it's $1.93. Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to buy yeah. in. Buy low, baby. Exactly. Buy low. Buy low. Uh, let FaZe be an example of that. Those That's types of gaming companies are sort of dead. But see, all those places have run out of ideas. Like, they had to scam their way into a public offering. 100 Thieves is like, we're getting into game development. I'm like, everybody's out of ideas. Even streamers are like, yo, I'm clocking out. Or they're getting into development. Dude, Everyone's mean, getting into development. That's what the event is. Really, events are honestly where a lot of streamers make the bang for their buck. So, yeah, for showing up, not for making them. I mean, a couple of streamers, I'm going to plug ludwig did a cool chess boxing event granted he t- technically lost money he's making it back up on youtube videos but uh there are streamers hosting events that are pretty interesting and unique in the sense that who the fuck wants to box and then play around chess and then box yeah, and then play like around chess jake 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 Joe paul yeah jake paul jake paul <laughs> yeah jake paul <laughs> you idiot oh i love yeah. it jake love it paul jill and paul yeah right. exactly but Two all right more. guys we we basically i think we've wrapped up everything this no we, we talked now. ad nauseum about many different plethora of topics and we honestly got nowhere but i love it that's the way this exactly. goes this is how we do it we're back we have good nuggets and we had a bunch of shit to say it was just it was all built up and so it just needed to to be said over time we're vomiting Excited for the year of gaming, even just going through that list, right? That we talked about earlier of the yeah. games coming out in 2023. It is going to be good. Yeah. I'm still calling it out here. Tears of the Kingdom is going to be game of the year. Throw it out. No, no, it's not. Our it's going Oof. to be, it's going well, to be Hogwarts mystery. It's not mystery. Legacy. Like it's, I keep calling it mystery, but geez. actually, since we actually last spoke, that other one, the, the, the AR one shut down. <laughs> the uh-huh. Harry Potter one. Oh, one oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hogwarts. It's not Legends. Was it Hogwarts Legends or Hogwarts something? Shit. Why do I not remember this? We played it too. That's the best yeah, part. That's silly. It's not mystery. Yeah, it, it's not even showing up on my phone. So fuck it. Who knows? 
So we're gonna find this out so we don't leave everybody hanging because we don't know when we're gonna be back to explain it and it won't be next week. Um Niantic Harry Potter. I'm gonna be so surprised. Wiz- Wizards Unite. Wizards Unite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I saw that. I was like, you did it, baby. So you did it, baby. I would have never guessed that shit. That was last year, though. It was in uh, November of 2021. So it's old news. Old news. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. That shit failed fast. But anyway. All right. We're out of here. <laughs> this was the return. It was a year cap. We'll be back eventually. It's people like games, like, subscribe, etc. Whatever legit. it is. Thank you for bearing with us for this long if you have. Love yeah. you. Peace. Later.